It's a rainy day in Southern California, and I was inspired to do a video on one of my all-time favorite ACG shoes, the Air Moab. ACG is short for All Conditions Gear, and the line of shoes was started by Nike in 1989. Actually, it's not just shoes, but it's clothes too. And they're made for all conditions, like rain, snow, sleet, hail, but also all conditions like on mountains, off-roading, even underwater. ACG shoes are very, very innovative. And the very first Nike off-roading all-terrain shoes were actually not ACG shoes. They were made well before ACG ever got started. So there were two hikers that were hiking up K2, which is the second largest mountain in the whole world. And they were wearing LDV shoes. These are vintage waffles from the 70s. The shoes completely fell apart. And these hikers sent a picture to Nike and they basically said, we need better shoes. Mark Parker and Nike was inspired to create off-roading shoes. And they came up with the Lava Dome, the Approach, and the Magma. And those were the first three off-roading all-terrain shoes. And then years later, we got ACG. And a couple years into ACG, we got the Air Moab. Air Moabs were named after Moab, Utah. And that place is actually spelled M-O-A-B. But Nike added a W and another B, so the word is phonetically Moab. I guess they didn't want people to call the shoe the Air Mobe. Let me put this umbrella down, come inside out of the rain, and I want to introduce you to the Air Moab and the Air Moab family. We'll close this door to keep these shoes nice and dry. Come on over here and have a look at this Air Moab. This is the original signature colorway of the Air Moab. There were actually two different versions of the Moab. You'll notice this cream beige camel-like upper. A lot of people say that the shoes actually look like a band-aid because of the color and also the perforations on the leather. The signature Moab colorway is going to be this cream upper with orange and royal blue accents. And that's what all of the shoes in the Moab family look like. The Moab is actually a beefed up cross-training version of an Air Hirachi. You can see right here a scream green Hirachi on top of an Air Moab. There are so many similarities from the neoprene booty that you put your foot in to the lack of a swoosh, this exoskeleton and this heel piece that wraps around the back. The shoes look very, very similar. And have a look at the amazing midsole on the Moab. You can see these speckles that are black and gray and then gray and black. Remember the speckled midsoles got their start with the Air Jordan 4 in 1989 and just a couple years later we have speckled midsoles on this off-roading shoe. So the theme behind this shoe was nature, outdoors, off-roading and that's why the colorway is sort of this natural color. Let's have a look at some of the shoes in the Moab family. I don't have all of them, but I do have a lot of them. We'll talk about the ones I have and we'll briefly touch on a few of them that I don't have. Let's start here with the Air Safari Moab edition. I picked these up at a Nike outlet for $34.99, back before the hype Air Safaris used to hit outlets. Not anymore. Anyway, in the Safari tone right here with the beautiful Safari print, this was actually inspired by ostrich skin. But anyway, this is the Moab color. The Air Safari came out along with a pack of Air Max 1s and Air Trainer 1s back in 1987. Fast forward a couple of years, the Air Max 2 came out in 1989. Today it's called the Air Max Lite, and there's a size exclusive that looks like the Air Moab. I don't have those, but let's have a look at the Air Max 90. This was called the Air Max 3 back in the day. These are known as the King of the Mountain Edition. Have a look at the beautiful snakeskin-like material. Last year was the year of the snake. There's a lot of Air Max 90s that came out with that colorway and pattern on the upper, but it all started here on the King of the Mountain edition. And you can see, of course, the signature Moab colors. Fast forward a couple years to the Air Hirachi, the shoe that we pulled out and looked at earlier. There's a Moab edition of those that's worth about $500 that I never was lucky enough to pick up. Another year later, in 1993, we got the Air Max 93, which is called the Air Max 270, and there's a Moab edition of those. Let's work our way to 95. Here's a pair of Moab edition Air Max 95s. The shoes were designed by Sergio Lozano, and his inspiration was the human body. This is a beautiful Moab edition. You can see that Band-Aid-like upper with the purple and orange accents. From running shoes, I want to transition to basketball shoes that were inspired by the Air Moab. And we'll start here with the Air Force One.
The Air Force One was originally released in 1982, and the Moab edition celebrates the 25th anniversary of the Air Force One. They came out in 2007, along with a bunch of other Air Force Ones inspired by other shoes. There was an amazing exhibit in the Shoeseum that featured the Air Force Ones alongside the shoes that were the inspiration behind the Air Force Ones. So fast forward a few years from the Air Force One to the Dunk. There's a pair of Moab Dunks for men and for women. They're called Dunk CL, and CL stands for classic, and it means that the Dunk was inspired by a classic shoe, and in those cases, it's the Air Moab. Have a look at this shoe, the Terminator. This shoe was originally made for Georgetown. So back in the mid 80s, Nike made Dunks for a bunch of different colleges, but Georgetown wanted their own shoe, and Nike awarded them with a pair of Terminators. See how it says Nike in big block letters on the heel? The Terminators that the Hoyas wore actually said Hoyas on the back there. There were a bunch of different Terminators in the Shoeseum that are very valuable. There's the Swagger Edition, which are chocolate mint. There were a couple of pairs in the Rock and Roll exhibit. One of them was heavy metal inspired. The other one was grunge inspired. You gotta love the Terminator. And then the last shoe that we've got here to talk about is the Air Jordan Alpha 1. This is known as the Tinker Hatfield Edition because remember, Tinker designed the Air Moab. This orange is the signature colorway from the Moab with the Band-Aid-like upper. You can see all of these perforations on here. It was one of the improvements on the Air Jordan Alpha one, along with the new midsole. And then Zoom Air is tucked in here. Dwayne Wade actually wore Air Jordan Alpha ones back in the day. And nowadays, you can go on Nike ID and customize your very own Air Jordan Alpha ones. And that's cool because Nike doesn't really let you customize your own Jordans. Anyway, it's been a pleasure walking you through the Air Moab and the Air Moab family and talking a little bit about all conditions gear shoes. Remember, all conditions gear has to do with rain and snow, but it's also all sorts of conditions, like every type of land and mountain that you can imagine. There have been amazing ACG shoes from the Air Hamara, the Escape, the Wildwood, the Ketchikan. I can go on and on, but the Moab is one of the shoes that people, when they think of ACG, they think of the Air Moab.